Hey, back for a mini message continuing Joseph's story. Remember, Joseph has been um, captured by his brothers. They're talking about killing him. And in verse 23, it picks up. It says, So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe he was wearing. This is found in Genesis 37, uh, verse 23. And then in verse 24, And they took him and threw him into the cistern. Uh, the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. So they didn't drown him. And notice they took the robe. For them, this ornate robe was a big deal. It was a special gift that Jacob had given to Joseph. And it was kind of a visible sign of the favoritism. And so for these brothers, it was a way of stripping that favoritism. It was something they could physically do to him in that moment because they absolutely despised him. They despised him because of the dreams. They despised him because... Jacob favored him. They despised him because maybe even they thought he was coming to check up on them and go tattletale. I don't know. But they throw him in this cistern. And then verse 25 it says, As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their cameras were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh. And they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. So this was some of their relatives, some distant relatives here, the Ishmaelites, right? The Ishmaelites are descendants of Ishmael, who was Abraham's um, son from Hagar, who was Sarah's maidservant. So a lot of information there. I just gave you a big family tree history session. But it's hard to look at this and try to figure out exactly what to think because were they better for not killing him and selling him into slavery? Or was it even worse because they decided to get rid of their brother and make a buck off of it? I mean, I, I don't know. It's like, you know, uh, one and one A. Both are terrible and it's, it's almost equal in, in what they're doing. Now, the other side of this is what they did. They sat down and ate their meal. That is, that is brutal. Stop and think about it. They were comfortable enough with what they were doing to sit down and have lunch with their brother in a cistern right next to them. Now, Scripture goes on to tell us in Genesis 42 when they are dealing with the conviction of the sin that they are ignoring in this moment. It tells us in verse 21, Speaking amongst themselves, they said, Clearly we're being punished because of what we did to Joseph long ago. We saw his anguish when he pleaded for his life, but we wouldn't listen. That's why we're in this trouble. See, here's what I think. Joseph is in this well. He's in this cistern. And he is crying for help. He's begging them. They can hear this. And they're sitting there eating lunch. It is callous on a, on a level I can't quite register for their hatred of their brother that they would be you know, willing to do this. And they sold him for 20 shekels of silver. It was a shocking demonstration of the depravity that can be in the human heart. And when we go across history, we see this. We see the callousness, the depravity. We see it in, in people that have killed and murdered. We see it on large scales with people like Mao, Hitler, Stalin, Castro. We see it. The human heart is capable of some vile things. And that's what these brothers are involved in at the moment. And remember in this story... There's a boy at the bottom of that cistern, a real person. What must he have been feeling? The fear, the, the anxiety. What must he have been feeling when he was pulled out of that cistern and sold to these men and taken from his home? It was awful. I can't imagine what Joseph was feeling in this moment. And this is just the first of many trials Joseph will go through before he rises to be the man that God plans for him. And we'll continue his story tomorrow. See you soon.